Hey, hi everyone. My name is Jasmine, one of the Global Learning Coordinator here at Rocky University. Today, we're so happy to have Caroline's here to represent Absolute Internship, and she's going to give us a presentation about the internship opportunities in Europe. Uh, okay, so I will pass it to you, Caroline. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the introduction. I will quickly just tell everyone a little bit about myself, um, and I'll also introduce my colleague um, who's joining us today. Uh, my name is Carolyn. I am the University Partnership Manager at Absolute Internship. I am actually originally from Toronto, Canada. I grew up um, just north of York University in Maple, so um, it's great to be partnering with York and connecting with students. Um, and I'll pass it over quickly to my colleague, Gia. Hi, thank you, Carolyn. Yes, my name is Gia. Um, I am originally from Texas, so a little bit closer uh, than Spain, but a bit far. And I am a senior enrollment coordinator at Absolute Internship. Um, and I'm joining today just to, uh, to keep an eye on the chat and answer any questions that you might have while Carolyn is speaking about our programs. Um, all right, I'm quickly going to share my screen. <clears throat> um, Jasmine, do I have the... Oh yeah, I give you the access to your screen. Okay, I'm just trying to see where the access is. <clears throat> oh, right at the bottom, excuse me. It's bright green and I was <laughs> expecting it to be... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> It's, I was going to say it's Monday, but it's definitely Tuesday, but thanks for <laughs> it's, too early. it's too early. <laughs> it is the afternoon here in Barcelona, but you're all being very too kind. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So a little bit about Absolute Internship. Um, Absolute Internship, we have been around since 2009. Um, we originally started in Hong Kong, and now we are based in beautiful Barcelona. So we've sent over 6,000 students abroad from 63 nationalities. Uh, we have focus in over 30 industries, and we have over 1,000 host companies that we work for. Um, it's a real true international experience with Absolute. Even within our office, uh, we speak over 15 languages, which is amazing and also intimidating to someone like myself who speaks weeks, one and a half. <laughs> um, a little bit about some of the partners that we work with. As you can see, we see York University here, but um, these are some of the universities we work with where we have students attending our program. So you see some of the big schools here. We have Harvard, Boston College, uh, Catolica in Italy. We have the University of Edinburgh. We have Western, which is just down the road from, from York as well. So when you're coming on your international internship program with Absolute Internship, you will be meeting students from all over the world from some of these universities. We do have over 75 partners, so they're not listed here, um, but just so you can get an idea of the international cohort you'll be um, with when you're abroad. Um, what we'll talk about today, so we're going to be talking about the benefits of an international internship, the lifestyles and work practices and tips in our host cities within Europe. Um, I'm going to show an accommodation example, an internship example, um, the application process, and some, um, actually there won't be pricing on this um, slide, unfortunately, I apologize about that memo, but I'm very happy to follow that up with students um, and direct you to the pricing because York does have specific pricing for students um, and a discount, so just for you to know. Uh, so with an international internship, you will be making your profile stand out. It's going to have a real kind of point on your resume um, that your interviewers are going to want to ask you about, especially um, with being in university and maybe this is your first experience kind of in the working world. Um, having that kind of story of being abroad and working abroad is really going to give you a point to talk about and make that profile stand out. You're also going to hone in on your cultural business skills. Um, while obviously studying within Canada, you're going to be working within a completely different culture. So this is, in this case, uh, focusing on the cultural business skills within Europe in these different cities. Uh, you're going to be working in a foreign language. So all of our internships are within English, but you will be having that exposure of being in an office within Spain or being in a, um, an office within um, Stockholm. So you're going to be hearing foreign languages around. You're going to be working with different professionals and kind of picking up on those language and communication skills. Fantastic. Um, so the most exciting part, um, where we're located. 
Barcelona, Lisbon, Madrid, Paris, and Stockholm. So some fantastic cities here um, for you to come and enjoy. So what to expect? Barcelona, where I um, am very fortunate to call home, 17.6 uh, of our residents are non-national. Barcelona is a very cosmopolitan and transient city. Um, so you have people from all over the world. Uh, people in Barcelona are very sociable. Um, in Spain, breakfast is at 11 a.m., lunch at 3 p.m., and dinner is at 9 p.m. But don't worry, you don't need to follow um, those trends. I personally don't, but it's just kind of what it is culturally here. Um, while Barcelona is also in Spain, um, it is in the province of Catalonia, um, and Catalan is widely spoken. Uh, the Catalans are very proud of their culture, so you will hear both languages throughout the city. Um, and outdoor activities are super common. We are right on the Mediterranean. We are surrounded by mountains. We're about an hour and a half from um, places to ski and snowboard. So um, even just kind of life outside, um, life in Barcelona is very much spent outside. Uh, normally apartments are a lot smaller, but we have fantastic weather. It's always sunny and there's always something to do outdoors. Uh, work practices and tips within Barcelona. So in Spain, most companies still have um, a hierarchical structure. And although this mindset is changing, um, it's kind of slowly happening, which we'll go into a little bit more <laughs> details throughout. Um, meetings in Spain are a casual affair. Um, I'd say that sometimes they're happening over a lunch setting or kind of over a coffee. Um, they're definitely a little bit different than maybe that corporate North American or Canadian culture that you're used to. Um, in Spain, during the summer months, we have intensive working hours. It does get very hot uh, in Barcelona, and air conditioning is maybe not as prevalent as, um, as it is back in North America. So there will be consolidated hours. So thinking working from maybe like 8 a.m. to 2 or 3 o'clock, so you can take the rest of the afternoon to either enjoy a long lunch, a siesta, or just to have free time for yourself. Um, even though your internship will be in English, keep in mind that you will hear Spanish or Catalan within the office um, and your colleagues, uh, between your colleagues um, speaking to one another. Um, business dress is often very informal um, than other cities. Obviously, that means clothes, uh, clothes still need to be neat and tidy, no rips, no tears, um, but it's much more casual than I would say certain cities that we'll explore um, in the rest of this slide. And people go to work by bike, by bus, by metro, um, and some go walking. When I was living in the city, um, I was definitely a walker. Um, Barcelona is a fantastic city to walk through, lots of big wide pedestrian streets, um, and the public transport is fantastic. Lots of bike lanes as well. <laughs> Uh, London. Um, I used to also live in London, so it has a um, real close place to my heart. You can see here 14% of residents are non-national. Um, I know I just said that Barcelona is a cosmopolitan city, but for me, London really feels like that. Uh, the British people are very welcoming of every culture and creed. Um, there is just every festival, every type of food that you can imagine, you can find in London. It's there. Um, Tea time is an excellent way to talk to your coworkers. Um, tea and biscuits is a very kind of big thing within, within British culture and especially within the workplace. Um, the Brits use humor. Um, sarcasm is definitely their favorite form in most uh, situations. And there's always something going on in London. I feel like it's the center of the universe. There's concerts, there's markets, there's festivals, um, always something happening for you to do and get involved in. Uh, work practices and tips in the great city of London. The average commute time in London can take up to 60 minutes. London is a massive city. Uh, the Tube, uh, which is their metro um, underground system, is absolutely fantastic, but the commute times are quite long. Uh, the British communication style is a mix of like direct and indirect communication. Uh, one of the best parts of British work culture is how hard they work, but also knowing when to call it quits. Um, it's very much within business working culture in the UK that once you're done with the day, you kind of meet up with your colleagues afterwards, um, but kind of it's more of socializing, less business talk, um, and really just enjoying the company of your colleagues. Although hierarchy is very important, the concept of teamwork is also a very vital part of British work culture. 
Uh, the British pride themselves on fairness and equality, um, and this also translates to the business world. Paris, uh, wonderful Paris, 17.9 of residents are non-national. Uh, people in Paris are much more reserved and private. Uh, bistros and brasseries are not only for tourists. Um, once again, outdoor activities are very common. Going to enjoy the sun in Paris's parks um, is some of the Parisians' uh, favorite pastime during the summer. And of course, no surprise here, in Paris, people uh, dress fancier than other cities in Europe. Um, I know Gia was lucky to go and visit our students in Paris this, um, this summer, so she could probably uh, vouch for that. <laughs> Uh, work practices within Paris. Um, in general, the French workplace is quite formal and conservative. So for all of you who watched Emily in Paris, it's maybe a little bit less like Emily in Paris and a little more formal. <laughs> uh, the working culture in France is very hierarchical. So kind of where you, your relationship with your boss and your different colleagues as an intern, you would definitely have an order of who you're going to be speaking to and communicating with. Um, there is very much a hard work ethos across business in France. Uh, appointments are always made for business matters. So just make your, you'll have a very busy schedule um, and things blocked off within your calendar while you're interning in Paris. A handshake is usual bet uh, between professionals. I guess this is kind of an important thing um, in many European cities, kind of introducing friends or colleagues kind of outside of work. There is a little bit of a double kiss on the cheek, but within the business, a handshake um, is usually used with those you don't know. But I guess with colleagues over time, if it was something that you felt comfortable with and wanted to get um, involved, you can kind of greet your colleagues in that way. Uh, while your internship will be in English, Taking the time to learn basic French would be considered respectful. Um, the French do definitely appreciate um, when you can kind of do your basic communications, your pleases, your thank yous um, are super important. Even just getting around the city would be vital. And business deals among the French are often discussed and signed over a meal, um, which sounds like my type of business meeting. So um, there's potential, and we've had students before who have gone and joined their supervisors on their internships um, over, and sorry, gone to business meetings and had, um, uh, had this done over meals. Excuse me, I jumped over that one very quickly. Uh, Madrid, so... I'd like to say, I was going to say the sister city to Barcelona, but um, as a Barcelona girl, they're very, very different cities. Uh, Madrid, I would say, is like the economic heart of Spain, while Barcelona is a little more of the um, kind of creative, like I said, cosmopolitan city. As you can see here, 13.22 residents are non-national. You're definitely getting a more Spanish experience being in Madrid. Um, just in terms of everywhere you go, you'll hear Spanish versus where Barcelona is, there's more of kind of a mix of English, Catalan and Spanish. Uh, people in Madrid tend to be late. Punctuality is not a thing. Um, so if you're going somewhere, meeting friends, don't be five minutes early because they're realistically gonna be 15 minutes late. <laughs> like I'd mentioned before with the, um, with the French in Paris, Spaniards kiss on the cheek to say hello. Once again, it's more common with friends and your colleagues. Uh, Spanish people are very passionate. They're passionate about football, they're passionate about food, and they're passionate about politics. Um, and they're more open to chat than I'd say other most European cultures. Kind of no topic is off, um, it's kind of off the table. Work practices within Madrid. Uh, once again, still with Spain, strong hierarchical structures and bureaucratic. Um, from someone who lives in Spain, the bureaucracy and paperwork takes a very, very long time. <laughs> uh, meetings in Spain, once again, are very formal. It's not considered inter uh, interrupt to, uh, sorry, impolite to interrupt someone, especially if you've been interrupted first. So that's a little bit of an interesting cultural difference. Uh, in Madrid, once again, the negotiation process is lengthy. Um, what, that's coming down to the bureaucracy within Spain being very slow. Uh, relationships are usually built through personal like lunching and social hours. And in Madrid, lunch breaks often last up to two hours. Uh, business dress, once again, is casual, professional, professional and conventional. And the best way to get around Madrid is by Metro.
Lisbon, uh, lovely, lovely Lisbon. As you can see here, 9.3 residents are non-national, so a very Portuguese experience being within Lisbon. Um, people in Lisbon are extremely polite and welcoming. On every time that I have visit, the taxi drivers are super kind. Everyone in the shops is really lovely, um, welcoming, want to give you suggestions. They want to offer you food. They want to tell you where to go. I always find um, the Portuguese, yeah, they're very, very welcoming. Uh, Portuguese people love football. They have their coffee breaks in the morning before they start work, after lunch, in the middle of the afternoon. So you get the gist of there's lots of coffee being drunk in Lisbon and the Portuguese are very laid back. Some work practices and tips. So a working day in Portugal, you can see nine to six, a bit of a long one and companies are quite strict about it, but don't worry with the multiple coffee breaks, you should be fine. <laughs> Um, the work culture is quite casual with this laid back culture. Um, once again, comes issues with like slow response and very slow bureaucracy, similar to Spain, but maybe a little bit more intense. Um, in most cases, punctuality is um, for work is a demand from your superior. So while you're expected to be early, um, they probably won't. But sometimes, you know, if you get stuck in traffic, um, that's OK. But your superiors will want you to be there on time, even if they're maybe not there themselves. And Portugal is a, traditionally is a very Catholic country. So there is a lot of national and public holidays. So um, there could be some days there of getting some extra days free off of work. Wonderful, Stockholm. Um, Stockholm over in Sweden, 15% of residents are foreign born. So the highest of any Nordic city. And then, you know, this kind of goes against my conversation about the Portuguese and coffee, but few people drink more coffee than the Swedes. Um, they have a tradition, our actual, one of our co-founders, he is from Sweden, so we do kind of partake in this within our office ourselves. It's the tradition of fika, um, and that is basically um, in the mornings having coffee and cakes and pastries with your colleagues. Um, not speaking about work, just kind of connecting with one another. So there's an opportunity to have this coffee and cake opportunity <laughs> within Stockholm on your internship. Uh, Swedes are generally rated um, as number two um, in English as a second language. Every Swedish person that I have met has a fantastic level of English, if not perfect, potentially better than some other English speakers I've met. And it's not uncommon to find restaurants or stores shut down for an entire month. Um, and that usually happens within the month of July, because in Sweden, they take their summer holidays very, very seriously. So I guess Sweden would probably, Stockholm specifically, would be a very different structure within the business than we probably you've experienced within North America. Um, it is normal to have a close relationship with your boss um, and to know your supervisor and to call them by their first name. Um, you'll be sharing your ideas with your boss, um, like how you would solve an issue within meetings, you're able to put your ideas forward. So if you wanted to kind of have that shake up of maybe the different business culture, I would definitely recommend going to Stockholm. Uh, people, once again, dress casually at work, make sure you're punctual and make sure that you leave punctually as well. No one's going to want, want you staying around doing extra hours at the end of the day. When work is done, work is done. Uh, the concept of the gum, not too much, not too little, not too noticeable, everything in moderation kind of sums up uh, the Swedish lifestyle. Um, you might go for after work um, kind of interactions with your colleagues some days. So that could either be um, walks around the city, more coffee, desserts or some drinks. So there is once again, similar to the Brits of that relationship um, with your colleagues outside of work. Uh, Swedes avoid arguing, so different from the Spanish. Um, they are passionate, but they definitely don't want to get into any debate, speaking about politics, anything that's kind of, you know, getting people arguing or all fired up, they tend to avoid those types of conversations. Fantastic. Um, wanted to just show a little bit of an example example of a um, housing that we have here in Barcelona. So we have private rooms with bathrooms, we have kitchenettes in the room, we have cleaning and linen services, um, TV in the common room, and Wi-Fi. Um, so these are always, this one specifically, they're always centrally located, close to public transport, because we believe that you need to be able to get to work um, and get back home to enjoy the rest of the city. So this is just an example of our Barcelona housing. Uh, some of our available industries, like I mentioned before, we have over 30. 
So as you can see here, there's a long list of industries kind of covering everything from your businesses to your creative industries to IT tech, finance. Um, I won't read them all off um, and bore you with saying all 30, but as you can see here, um, there are lots of opportunities for students. It is worth keeping in mind that, you know, if you are an accounting major and maybe you're looking to kind of have an accounting internship in a fashion company or a nonprofit, um, you could probably take those skills from your degree and we could look to put, putting um, the opportunity for you to have an internship in another industry. Um, so some internship examples, these are basically, um, it's not so much to be focusing on the company, but it's more to look at the job tasks. Um, we want these internship opportunities, you know, you're not just going to get coffee, despite me talking about how much coffee you'll be drinking in certain cities. Um, you will be a vital member within the team, you will have responsibilities, there will be requirements of the jobs that you have to do. So this is just an example. So we have Jonathan um, from Western University, he was doing a business development internship in Stockholm. So as you can see here with his main job tasks, um, he was conducting research, um, this was specifically with like a gaming design company within Sweden. So he was doing research um, and was contributing to game content. He was analyzing player feedback. Um, he was helping executing uh, marketing campaigns and he was assisting in creating um, assisting in creating and managing the social media content. And we have Louisa who is a York student. Louisa was actually attending um, in Paris. Uh, last year doing a legal internship and she was actually connecting with students at the study fair um, not too not too many like not too many weeks ago so um, she was working at the law firm within Paris so she was analyzing summary like law precedents um, she was working on preparation of like client documents um, working closely with the legal team um, kind of looking at different like legal writing and getting a better understanding of the firm's approach um, and she was participating in client meetings and conference calls. Uh, the application process. So, um, um, Jeff, you're happy to kind of put that information in, into the chat if there's any student. We do have a link. So um, first point is to fill in an application form via York's Global Internship webpage. Um, the deadline for this is December 1st, if I am correct. So putting in your application first with York will be fantastic. Um, then the um, York's uh, global team will get on to Absolute Internship and send us your profile. Once we have your profile, we're gonna be inviting you for an interview. Um, so someone on our enrollment team, like the lovely Gia or other colleagues will be um, having an enrollment interview with you to um, discuss your qualifications, ask questions why you're deciding to go abroad, you know, your internship goals, all the things, um, you know, that would be really important for us to know before going into your internship opportunity and also giving you the opportunity to ask us questions um, to kind of ease your nerves if there was anything that you needed to know. Um, after your interview, your profile is going to be obsessed by our team, and within the next two to three days, you will get um, notification from Absolute Internship if you've been accepted onto the program. Once you've moved through the enrollment stage, you've been accepted onto the program, which is fantastic, you'll move on to our placement team. So our placement team consists of um, members from all our different host cities, so from the six cities that I mentioned before, you will have um, our program manager, and they are the expert in that city. So they know the host companies, they know what's going on, they have their real finger on the pulse of all the great opportunities. They're going to have another interview where they're going to go in depth about your internship experience. So once again, looking at your profile, what are your internship goals? What are your career goals? Um, they're going to work with you on your CV, making sure that everything is edited. Um, and then they're gonna start sending your profile out to different companies. Eventually a company will come back and say, I'm really interested in this profile. We would love to invite them to a foreign interview. What we'll do from that point is we're gonna give you um, a whole company and job description. This is gonna tell you the supervisor's name, the time that you're supposed to be working, where you're supposed to be working, dress code, job responsibility. So you have a full understanding of what you're supposed to be doing uh, before you go into this interview. We'll help you with a bit of interview prep, then you'll have your interview with the company. All will go well. They'll love you. They'll think this is a great opportunity and they will get on to us and they will ask us, um, you know, they want to offer you an internship. What we'll do is we'll have you sign an agreement. This is basically just to set expectations. So the company knows what they're supposed to be doing and what you're supposed to be doing as well in your internship. And then that's all the hard work out of the way. And you just have to um, 
get on your opportunity and come over to Europe and start your internship. We have our socials here in case anyone is interested. I say LinkedIn is more of like our professional big sister who has like all the tips and tricks and really kind of what we're doing as a team. Um, you'll have uh, Instagram will show like our student takeovers, what they're doing, um, kind of what's happening within within the business itself. There'll be opportunities for there, like always keep an eye because there is discounts and kind of promo codes that come up quite often. So make sure you keep an eye. And then TikTok is all the fun things that we get to do um, either by students or with the staff ourselves. So please check us out on socials. And that was that. That was uh, the, I'd love if there's any students here, if they had any questions, um, if there was anything that wasn't clear or that you'd love, um, just love to ask myself or Gia about the whole process. Thank you so much, Caroline. I'm just gonna pause the recording from here.